Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you all. This is your host, Amina Ahmed, and you're watching Muslim Network TV. Welcome back to Next Gen on today's discussion of the suppression of voices, of youth voices and minority voices in India. You're watching us on Galaxy 19 Satellite, Muslim Network TV, Amazon Fire TV, Roku, and Apple TV as well. Previously on Next Gen, we have discussed the situation of minorities in India, particularly Muslims, Christians, and Dalits. We've also spoken on the rise of Hindu extremism, Hindutva ideology here in the United States as well. And recently we spoke about the farmers protest and discussed how this protest is going down is the largest in human history. But we also believe on Next Gen that it's important to highlight the voices of those on the ground, of activists, journalists, advocates on the ground in India. And in order to discuss that, to discuss the suppression of voices in India, we have someone who is personally impacted by that, who is on the ground in India right now, Sharjil Usmani who's a Muslim activist based in India and one of the leaders of the anti-CA ag agitations. Usmani was also put into prison because of his work in this and he writes columns and essays regarding the socio-economic status, the politics and the relation of Indian state and the Muslim population in leading uh, in leading columns. Thank you so much, Sharjah Usmani, for being here with us today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. Sharjil, back in September, you were granted bail after being in prison for two months. On what basis did the Indian government put you in prison? It, the, the charges were all fictitious. Like uh, I was lead, I was one of the one of the students who were leading the protests against CA and NRC in Aligarh Muslim University. And on fifteenth of December, the fifteenth of December, twenty nineteen, the police attacked the protesting students with pellet guns, stun, stun grenades, uh, assault rifles, and even the banned uh, smoke gun, uh, uh, smoke cannons. And after the after the attack, the, the police came up with the theory that it was the those were the students who students who attacked the police. And I was charged with uh, attempt to murder like a police. I was I was charged with attacking 19 policemen, uh, looting their pistol, trying to cause riot, uh, damaging public property, uh, uh, like three different attempt to murder uh, cases against me uh, when it was the police who was attacking students. And it has been established by various independent fact-finding reports. Even the uh, High Court judge of, uh, of Allahabad bench, he said that uh, he asked the police officials that what happened in EMU that you had to make it look like a war-like situation. What kind of uh, uh, what what happened? What kind of protest there was there was that uh, you attacked in such brutal way and made it look like, look like a war? He looked at the pictures of the of the of the attack and then he commented that. So all the charges were fictitious. Plus one thing that 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 is alarming about my arrest particularly was that I wasn't arrested by the regular police. I was arrested by the anti-terrorism squad, uh, which again um, you know makes like uh, a Muslim inherently is a national security issue in India, and normal police won't deal with people like civilians like me because we aren't. No normal civilians. We we are uh, national security reason. So I believe that every Muslim youth is a potential threat to the national the idea of national security of India because they they tend to you know put uh, fictitious terror charges on students on Muslim students like see the case of Sharji Lima. He is an, uh, he's under UAPA or Asifik Baltanha, another friend of mine. He was leading protests from Jamia. A student of BA uh, BA Persian final year, he is on he is on uh, terror charge in jail. Even a, a Muslim generally Siddiq Kappan who went to cover uh, the the Hathras gang rape incident in uh, in UP's Hathras, even mm -hmm. he is charged with terror charge for going to report on a, on the story. So that is how being Muslim in India is like. Like they can, it's basically uh, our life is basically in their hand in them when they want and who they want and they can put them behind bar and nobody is going to question them like uh, 
Muslims do protest, but the larger uh, Indian majority, the the other communities in India, uh, the people with power, with privilege, with agency to speak, uh, they they remain silent. They don't do enough. This that's very interesting that you speak about. <clears throat> even in the process of your imprisonment, there was Islamophobia present when they were uh, taking you to prison. But you know, there were, you say that there were a lot of other students that were thrown into prison as well as a result of their work, but you gained you know, immense amount of international coverage, of media coverage. Uh, do you feel that if you hadn't gained that coverage, probably um, things would be different for you? Yeah, things would have been a bit different uh, in a way that, uh, uh, after people started talking about my arrest, uh, when I was being interrogated, or say when I was being to tortured in the in the ATS headquarter, uh, in the next morning uh, a senior officer came and he asked the the subordinates not to you know, carry on with what they were doing before, and that saved me saved the. Uh, me in a way that uh, I wasn't tortured anymore because of all the attention my arrest uh, received. Uh, then that uh, I I think that I was I was treated the same way any other Muslim in India is treated at, in the hands of in the custody of police and other state enforce, enforcement agencies. Yeah, tell us about that, right? What did you experience in prison? Uh, you know, as a Muslim, how is that experience different? Uh, prison, um, I like. I don't know how to put it, but uh, prison felt like a, a ghetto where I have been brought up, where I live. Uh, like there are too many Muslims in 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 my barrack, uh, uh, in, in the jail itself. Like uh, like Muslims hugely outnumber uh, their representation in jails, which is again a uh, very interesting and uh, and. Show reveals the how how the Indian state criminalizes Muslims in India. That uh, despite being uh, twenty percent or ten percent in population, their representation in jail is more than often more than forty percent, fifty percent. The national status is, says that Muslims are sixteen point seven percent uh, in jails, uh, uh, but the number of Muslims who are on trial and are in jail is a lot more. And so jail jail the experience in jail was. Uh, like it, it was like uh, my AMU hostel, all Muslim students living together, sharing their uh, mm. problems, uh, sufferings together. That 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 was what uh, jail was about to me. Because uh, since since when I when I was arrested, the the local newspapers, the local media, they they had you know uh, portrayed me in a way that everybody recognized my face. So when I went there. Uh, there was a clear cut division. The the non Muslim uh, prisoners they, they hated me, and the Muslim prisoners uh, they they loved me. Uh, usually, usually would have. Uh, so it it was it was uh, like uh, when I it was a humbling experience in a way that uh, uh, when I saw the sufferings of other Muslim prisoners. Uh, the, those were incomparable with what, uh, like with what I was facing. So uh, I I forgot about my 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 own uh, my own uh, bails. Like uh, the, I I met I met a, a guy. I, I I can't mention his name here. He's still in jail. Uh, he came to he he was brought in jail uh, uh, like eight years ago. Uh, he was just married, like he was married at 22. Uh, his wife was 21, and he was jailed like seven months after his marriage. And his, you know, the kind, the kind of affection he has for his wife and the that belonging, going back to her wife. Uh, his his mother died while he was he couldn't meet her mother, uh, so he would. Take this small passport sized photograph of her wife and her mother, and he would keep it close to her. He would treasure it like it's, it's some, you know, some kind of um, treasure, mo most valuable thing in, uh, mm -hmm. for him. So there was the number of like hundreds of such stories. I, 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 like every person had uh, their whole story, and 
my day is passed in jail my, inter- my interacting with my my fellow brothers there and he was the he learned arabic uh, in the jail and he was leading uh, uh, the prayers five time prayers inside inside our barrack and and he still is in jail i, I don't know when or how will he be able to you know and and it's not just one story there are you know there are thousands of stories in such stories in jail i don't know yeah so it seemed in jail that there was a difficult environment but also probably a familiar environment where you say the majority of the population was muslim there were people that you know they looked and acted just like the people that you grew up around uh, but sergio how has your life changed uh it has changed in two way one that uh when that i am i am recognized by too many people now i i like people who i don't want to be recognized by like uh, recently i was in mangalore for a meeting there and mangalore is a very communal city it, it has been one of the first laboratories of rss they they experiment their uh, <coughs> new agendas there and then they impl- implant it everywhere export it to the rest of india so i was in a uh, in a in a uh, primarily hindu majority area and uh, i bought a packet of cigarette from from a local shop and i used uh, my mobile uh, online upi transaction to pay him so when you do online transaction the the sender's name appears on the shopkeeper's phone when i asked him see if you got the money and he looked at my name and then he looked at my face and they started showing it to other people there uh, luckily i was with a i was with a taxi i was going somewhere i stopped midway to buy that so i i was with a car in the car, car was on so i went back and we drove off but uh, the driver later told me that uh, had they caught you you would have been beaten up and that's why like i can't travel in public transport uh, to and this is not just with me it's with all other activists uh primarily muslim activists in india they have to take such precautions you have to always be vigil you know you have to keep your check your phones gps you have to you know, not have to be extra cautious so that that, that in that sense uh, it has changed and in another sense uh after coming out of prison uh, like prison gave me uh, time to think like i had no work to do there uh did not even get books to read so it was just me and my thoughts and like when i when i, I had ample of time to think so i was able to locate the real uh, the real disease that is causing these problems in india like what what is that point where we have to attack and then uh, we have to challenge and so uh, what what all mistakes we made during the course of movement uh i i was reviewing what what i wrote uh introspected what we said what we planned how could have been made better so in that sense i, I now i you know without after, before making any statement before saying anything anywhere before like giving any interview i i tend to you know sit down think and then i have got that sense of responsibility like i'm not just speaking for myself now i've I have to speak for a lot more many people so that sense of responsibility is here after i came out yeah and you speak about how you get a lot of unwanted attention now and you know there's just threats everywhere regardless of where you go that you have to even cover your face and uh you know not take your phone with you in fears of being tracked um what about your family do they face similar things as well or is this just pertaining to you and and other activists other student activists or does this affect their whole family and and the people close to them yeah it, it obviously does affect my the families of the activists because uh, like every, in every hearing uh, uh, like i'm banned from aligarh i can't visit my family unless uh, for 6 months and uh, unless uh, there's a court hearing in aligarh and i have to go to the court and because of that i can meet my family so that is one thing they they can't my parents can't meet their son because apparently the state government thinks that uh, i am a threat to the peaceful environment of aligarh as if up was so peaceful mm-hmm. without me uh, 
and then the police mean they 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 came they come knocking your door any day any time at one in night ats officers coming and uh, inquiring interrogating parents in, interrogating you know, younger ones so those all things happen and most of it goes unreported because obviously like parents won't want unnecessary attention and you know they like again start more uh, they the policemen will start more aggressive intimidation yeah. tactics that the plot that so uh, yeah they they also have to you know face a lot of issues because of what i do and what other actors do sure uh, like sure yeah hmm. Uh, Sergio, we'll continue talking right after our break about um, what your parents have to face as a result, as well as the general situation of minorities in India. You're watching us on Galaxy 19, Satellite, Muslim Network, TV, Amazon Fire TV, Roku, and Apple TV. We'll be right back with Sergio Osman. <laughs> Welcome back to Next Gen. I'm here with Sharjil Osmani, student activist and journalist who was imprisoned and received bail on September 2nd for the work that he does. Uh, Sharjil, you were telling us about your family and the repercussions that they have to face because of your work. Tell us more about that. Yeah, like media, even the media people, they, they also come and hound my parents. Mm -hmm. Like, dozens of mic on my father's face while he's going out for work like he isn't answerable to what i do and, and what i say but they, they they won't have this decency to you know they they'll come knocking at our doors they'll enter our house with their mics so it, it is all you know all chaos when whenever i get into some controversy at my yeah. home so what does the suppression of these voices, of minority and student voices in India, tell us about the general direction that it's heading towards? Uh, see, India, like I'm saying this with full responsibility and uh, and this is not an exaggeration in any in any way. I'm, I'm, I, I, I confidently believe that India is heading towards uh, genocide. Uh, the groundwork for genocide is being laid at the moment in india and and this is with the inter international community that they tend to uh, overlook or ignore when uh, when the groundwork is being laid like when when um, when the ethnic when the work started in rwanda uh, the western world said that it's just an ethnic clash between two communities and later when thousands and thousands of people died they said oh it's, it was a genocide and then they shouted never again now, mm -hmm. same happened in 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 burma and now same is happening in china and then india so i i don't want that india uh, india is added to that list so the sooner the international community intervenes the better for all the mm, communities of india who are on the margins and India is like I can't stress this enough that India is heading towards genocide. This uh, like the India India's prime minister is coming from an organization 
uh, whose founders were inspired by Hitler. They 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 have a Nazi style dress. They have a Nazi style su- uh, supremacist militant cadre. They 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 have you know, corrupted all the state organs. They 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 can do anything in India at the moment. And and like uh, like uh, if uh, like there's this example of a of a Muslim comedian. He he went to uh, BJP ruled state, and he is in jail now. It has been a, over a month. he the his his crime is that he was about to crack a joke that could have you know uh, that could have uh, uh, caused enmity between communities or something like that he did not commit the joke the police just assumed on complaint of a son of a bjp leader that he might have he could have and is in jail and no no judge is giving him uh, bail they they are saying that people like him like the judge said that people like his name is manova faruqi he the, the judge says that people like manova faruqi must be uh, must be punished he was uh, certainly directing the jail officials and police to punish him use third degree that, these are what uh, judge are saying like Uh, a CJ a CJI the chief justice of india he he recently said in a bail hearing the the applicant was uh, was uh, was about to die he was on death bed his kidney had failed he was inside jail so his lawyer moved for a bail application that my lord this this person is my uh, my client is going to die let him meet his family be with him be with his family in the last moments and the CJI says uh well if he is going to die whether he dies outside or in prison doesn't matter let him die like the chief justice is saying things like that the home minister uses words like termites for muslims mm-hmm. you know, these are termites they, sh- they should be thrown in bay of bengal so uh, like bjp leaders openly say in their election rallies that if you want to teach muslims lesson vote for us uh, these things indicate uh, that uh, there there is uh these are these these are the signals that uh, we are staring at a genocide in india so and and you speak about you know that not just the increasing islamophobia but you say outright right india is heading towards a genocide and we have to be proactive in order to prevent that but sharjil as a result of your work you have received immense backlash and you know pain towards yourself and your family what motivates you to continue doing the work that you're doing so like i am one of the most privileged muslims elite muslim uh like my father is a teacher he's a he's a professor of geography at emu and like not many Mus- like not many muslim youths like me can afford to you know keep their education aside like like all my classmates are in masters final year they they are about to do research and i'm just a graduation student at the moment so not every muslim youth can sacrifice their education and do what i can do so what i'm doing is a privilege like there are many students many muslim youths who want to do what i'm doing but it's just that they have to take care of their family they have they have uh, other financial needs which i don't have so it's kind of privilege and uh, so that's why it's my duty to uh, to express their aspirations their pain and their sufferings in the best way i can and i hope i am able to do just to do that 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 is so interesting that you say that you know you're in a position of privilege even though you spent two months in prison even though that you know you go out died and you face threats from tech direct say that you are privileged and i think that raises the question to those who are not in india who may be of indian origin but live in the diaspora what is your ask to them what can they do to support people like you and the causes that you fight for uh uh i i i wish they they could have they can amplify amplify our voices uh more like we need to be heard like the the media in india it has been completely you know uh, surrendered to the the to the current regime and and even even the social media the the ruling parties uh, it cell or the propaganda cell they they tend to you know attack humiliate and uh, and harass uh, 
uh, Muslim activists, more uh, to the female Muslim activists. Like uh, we have seen what happened in to Rana Yu or Safura Zargar who was in jail. What kind of comments, what kind of uh, things was said and done about them. So uh, it's important that uh, uh, people in uh, then like the people Muslims living abroad they 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 can make our voices heard in places where it matters. And and to our audience that is tuning in today, I hope that you can listen to Sergio's advice and amplify the voices of Muslim in India before it is too late. I think that, you know, in a way it is a bit late already, but before things do get worse, you need to amplify their voices. Thank you so much, Sergio, for being with us here today. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, and thank you to our audience for tuning in. And until next time, assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you all.